We're going to keep going till you can hear me. It's saying still no sound. Now, I don't know why. Because, well, we have it plugged in. This is the weird part. All right, you have sound now? No, I know. We're trying to get it to work. Okay. Everybody can hear me now. You know what? This little, uh, what do you call it? It's like a strip and it, it holds a lot of different things at once. Not a power strip. It's used for like USB cords may be going. So I'm going to make sure to get another one, but at least the sound is on. Also StreamYard was running slow at first. So the sound may have been delayed. And so that's why you may have not heard me initially because I saw uh, StreamYard freeze and go in slow motion twice. And that is probably why the sound tripped. So at least we have the sound now. Praise the Lord. And uh, we do have a better microphone. It's actually in back of me that we are going to install. And we're going to have uh, hopefully working by next week. So that's my hope. And um, today is, as you can see, January 5th, 2022. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, we are in the year 5782 on the Jewish calendar, which is the year to reawaken or be roused or awakened, I should say. It is the year to be roused or awakened. Uh, and so we are entering in some interesting times and, and, uh, and waters here, let me tell you. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pray and then we're going to get into a lot tonight. And the prayer shows that are all full. Wally is literally hanging upside down thinking he's Batman right now. I'm not even kidding you. This is what I'm watching. There it is. I'm going, where's my other one? Where's my other prayer show here? Okay. He's literally hanging upside. Wally has figured out how to hang upside down like a trapeze artist and swing himself over to the door when it's shut to grab onto my shoes and gnaw on them because we have one of those, uh, I, you know, you call him a shoe organizer on the back door. And so Wally has figured out how to hang upside down on his little porch that I have for him on the side of the cage, swing himself over and latch onto my shoes. So... If you could only see my Italian expressions when I walk in on these animals doing these things, you would all be quite amused. Oh, Amand is watching you, Wally. Amand is watching you. Here he comes. Okay, so let's pray and then we'll begin. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, we come before you, Lord. We praise you. You are almighty God. You are high and lifted up. You are far above every power, principality, and might matching your power, your holiness, your perfect name. Father, we give you all the glory. We humble ourselves before you. Let us become less so you become more in our lives. Acknowledging your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, was the word became flesh and was birthed into the earth. He talked amongst us. He talked. He taught us. And he willingly went to the cross. And he willingly was beaten and bruised, crushed, whipped, and pierced. And died a brutal death on Calvary. To purchase us back to you, Lord. To purchase us. We were bought with the highest price possible, which was the shedding of the blood of Jesus in Jesus' life. Father, we praise you. We rose again in three days. Ascended back into heaven and victoriously ruled and reigns at your right hand forevermore. And we declare that Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. And we honor that sacrifice before you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I invite your presence in the presence of the Holy Spirit to saturate the atmosphere, Father God, to just your glory saturates the atmosphere, that your power saturates the atmosphere and moves and leads and guides us, Father. Lead and guide me in all wisdom, counsel, my power, and the reverential fear of the Lord in Jesus' name. Lead those, Father God, and guide them watching in your wisdom and counsel and might and power in the reverential fear of the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to dispatch your holy angels and your holy warring angels of offensive weaponry, blueprint, attack, strategy, sabotage, slander, and the light of the enemy, satanic agents, dark forces, unclean spirits, puppets, and agents of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ is destroyed at the root of conception, is torn up by the root in the name of Jesus Christ, bound up and cast back to the dry places and the pits from which it came from to be bound there in the name of Jesus Christ and not return. Father God, just I ask you, go before us, Father God, in this, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, May only the truth come forth, Father God, tonight in Jesus' name. Take all the glory for yourself, Father. Take it all for yourself, Lord. 
You are the potter and we are the clay. You are the author and finisher of our faith. Without your breath of life in us, without your spirit, we do not have life. We are dust, Father God, without you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope you all had a wonderful New Year's. Uh, we did. I mean, it was Chris, you know, Chris kind of missed the, the countdown. But uh, besides that, you know, we, you know, we went out to eat and, you know, we went out to his, he always tries to convince me that his favorite restaurant is my favorite restaurant. So then he can go to his favorite restaurant. And this is the story of my life. So this is uh, what we did. And we got to see, you know, we got to see family, which was nice and took Chris to see his family. So that's what, uh, that's what we did. Had the animals around us too, as well. So once again, happy new year to everybody. Uh, we're just putting up, this is Andrew from Beverly Hills, precious metals, anything gold, silver related. Uh, he is amazing and he is a believer as well. So the head of the company is a believer and we appreciate that it is part, he is in our approved business section, part of uh, defund the swamp, refund the kingdom. So we just wanted to make sure to, uh, to put that up. So this is going to get interesting tonight. This is going to get very interesting, and I will tell you why. Because the reason why I had to delay the broadcast until tonight, for two reasons. First of all, I could feel in my spirit there was something God had not given me yet that he wanted to give. Sometimes that happens, and you have to go with the leading of the Lord. And if the Lord is saying, wait, because there's something else you have to wait. Secondly, Chris has not been feeling good for the past couple of days, and his voice is affected a little bit. So I had to make sure I was available uh, for that. Thank God uh, his aide Rebecca was here today helping. And so, um, you know, she was able to help him with things he needed to do. But I had to make sure that I was available as well because I could see clearly he wasn't feeling well. So just please pray for Chris. And uh, he seems better today, praise God. So he's better than he was. Uh, and he seems a little more chipper. Also, pray for little Toby. Little Toby went to the vet yesterday. And if you want, I can open the door. Maybe Chris can bring Toby in. Chris? Let's see if we can get Chris in here. Chris? Can you open the door and bring Toby in? Can you bring Toby in? Oh, Toby? Yeah, can you get Toby to come in here? There's Wally with the bomb drop. So little Toby went to the vet and Toby is fighting some bladder stones that have developed. So little Toby needs some prayer. He's on antibiotics. They're changing his diet some. So, and pray that he passes these stones. Is he coming? Yeah. Come here, Toby. Good Toby. Come to mama, come here. Come on, I'm gonna pick you up so everybody can see you. Good Ready? Toby. Oh, there goes the shofar. That's okay. Here's Toby. Toby. Little Toby went to the vet and he's fighting bladder stones. So he needs prayer. And here's Missy. Say hi, Missy. Yes. Oh, you give kisses. That's so nice. So yes, little Toby, he needs some prayer. And uh, <laughs> he's yawning. He's so unamused right now by everything that's going on. Okay, ready, Missy? I got to put Toby down. Here we go. Good boy. Good boy. Toby is the one that was miraculously healed of paralysis. And he is, the doctor says he's in pretty good shape for what happened to him. Uh, so that helps, but he's still fighting some of this. So we're praying for him and we have him on medicine. And my husband's wearing a grace and glory Patriot hat. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, me That's I'm a mess. You sound like a woman every time you come on. He's, he's <laughs> so worried about his hair. I mean, he's more worried about his hair than I'm worried about my hair. So, yes, we're using the urinary tract dog food. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And there he goes. That's his cameo appearance for tonight, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so now that you know about Toby and 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 Chris has made his cameo and everybody's happy, let's move on now to what we, uh, the business of the evening or the father's business, really. We're supposed to be about our father's business. This is our father's business, almighty God. Tonight, I'm going to talk about a dream, a prophetic dream I had having to do with the Supreme Court. And from that dream, the Lord segued into things happening right now. And he segued into patterns that we should be looking for with the Antichrist. Remember, 
an antichrist, the, the one that, you know, Satan really puts his stamp of approval on, that's in the book of Revelation, has to show up, has to go on I'm a good guy campaign for three years, three and a half years to be exact, before he makes anybody take a mark. Okay, so to have a mark of the beast, you have to have the Antichrist ruling and reigning for three and a half years. And so there are certain things the Lord wants people to know, to look for, because there's so much paranoia going on right now, and the Lord knows it. And he wants people to be wisdom, not only to use wisdom, but to be fine-tuned in this and to understand patterns and cycles biblically and what biblically we should be measuring up. So this is going to go into other things because the Lord started me with the book of Daniel, started me uh, looking at some other things as well. So we will get into that in, you know, the next and upcoming broadcast. But we have to understand something. You need the Antichrist in place first for anybody to take a mark. Because the book of Revelation says that he made both great and small, right? He made them take a mark who pledged their allegiance to the beast, right? So we need that in place. But there are things we need to keep in mind to look for that are leading up to this. Because we need to use wisdom here. And we can't, uh, we have to be careful about taking the book of Revelation and cramming it to try to fit events. Whereas events should perfectly like a puzzle be fitting the verses in Revelation. And that's how we should be weighing it up. Now, let's talk about the dream first. Now, I spoke to Barbara in length about this. So we were on the phone, uh, my goodness, the past three days we've been on the phone kind of talking about this, seeking the Lord uh, and I was, uh, from that, putting this together. And then the Lord was giving me, uh, late this afternoon, some other things. So, the three demons dream with the Supreme Court. Now, here's the dream, okay? Now, this dream happened on the 2nd of January. During the night is when it happened. And here's the dream. It was dark. It was darkness. There were three large, powerful demons that stood before me. I don't know if they saw me, but they were there. They were not allowed to come near me. So it's not like they were trying to advance towards me. They had to stay where they were. The first was muscular, large, with enormous horns, deep, loud voice, thunderous voice, body like fire, and could turn into a ball of fire with a creature letting out this gut-wrenching roar uh, or snarl from the middle of that fire. The two others, one was silverish looking with armor. It appeared this, this second demonic figure uh, going from right to left. So the first is the, the one I just mentioned. The second is the one that's silverish that looks like it had armor on. And the third was a much darker figure. It may have even been wearing a cloak, okay? Now, the first demon, the one that's muscular with the fire and the, with a thunderous voice, boasted, and I mean boasted, filled with pride and arrogance, boasted, um, as did the others about what they were going to do in the courts. He kept saying what they were going to do in the courts. Okay, so he was the most boastful. So the first demon was the most boastful about, and overly confident about what he was going to do in the courts and how he was going to interfere. And then he turned into that ball of fire and let out this gut-wrenching sort of roar, um, which means basically he's going to make a lot of noise. And uh, I woke up. Now, three demons. Each demon represents a different issue in the Supreme Court. So the first demon when I was talking to Barbara about it, um, she felt that it represented Moloch or Baal, that first one. He was a big boy. You know what I mean? He was, he was like, no, he was like no small thing on the totem pole, you know, but you have these three demons representing three different issues. And then you have, uh, within the Supreme court, 
And then you have these demons also representing a mock trial uh, as well. Now, we'll get into that in a moment, but they will operate through an attorney or one or two judges or in other ways, okay? So they're going to try to operate through people and manipulating circumstances in this case. Now, as this is happening, as we see these certain things going on in the Supreme Court, as we see these big cases going to the courts, first of all, the people are going through a mock trial right now, a trial run, a trial and testing. So the government and the worldly order want to see how far they can go with all of this. How much will the people take? How much will they buckle? When will they buckle? What's the breaking point? They're testing the waters. They're putting everybody through a mock trial. What were these demons doing in the dream? They were mocking. They were mocking and boasting and carrying on. Okay. We're entering the time of Daniel. Now, I'm not talking about the weeks Daniel talks about. I'm talking about the temperature of the time and the fact that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to take a stand. Now, we're going to get into that into another time, but the time of Daniel is coming into play system and, a, and multiple kings under the influence of demonic entities, okay? These are Prince of Persia type of demons that are trying to block the United States, that are trying to interfere in these trials of the courts, that are interfering in these legal systems. The prince, uh, in the book of Daniel, you have the account between himself and the prince uh, of Persia, where Gabriel, Daniel fasted and prayed for three weeks. There's number three again. Gabriel goes to come with the message. He's dispatched. The prince of Persia, who was the principality, who had the stronghold over that whole area, withstood Gabriel, withstood him to the point where Michael, the chief prince, had to be dispatched, the archangel, who eats these demons for breakfast, and the answer, delaying the a righteous verdict from coming forward in the Supreme Court on issues having to do with life, having to do with mandates, having to do with certain injectables. They want to delay a righteous answer. They want to interfere so the righteous answer doesn't come because the Prince of Persia interfered to try to stop the righteous answer from being dispatched through, through Gabriel by the righteous. So this is the same thing here. They want to stand in the way and literally block and delay the answers from coming. Now, That principality had a hold on leadership over that entire area, the Prince of Persia. So this was a principality you're dealing with. You're dealing with three principalities here that were in this dream. Now, you have to be careful. There are rules of engagement when it comes to principalities. So you have to be careful how you engage because archangels, warring angels are dispatched to engage principalities. Powers, rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. They are dispatched for that. We can pray to the Lord to dispatch his holy warring angels and holy angels will rankings and divisions to go and take down that principality, to go and move that principality, to go and destroy the delay that principality is causing. We can petition the throne room of God for the Lord to dispatch them to do that. Okay. Now, this has to do with the unborn, like I said, mandates, and it has to do with uh, certain injectables, amongst other things. This has to do with a mock trial, a trial run. Now, this all ties in, in a thread back to Jesus up to the coming Antichrist, okay, who has not taken the biblical position yet. Biblically speaking, because this... In this dream, there were three of these principalities, okay? Biblically speaking, what comes in threes in the Bible? Okay. Noah had three sons. You have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? They all have different functions. They're three, but they're one. 
there were three fathers of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Ark of the Covenant had three objects, gold jar of manna, Aaron's budded staff, the tablets with the Ten Commandments on it. Daniel prays three times a day in the book of Daniel. Jonah was in the belly of the great fish three days. According to the law, men had to present themselves at the temple three times a year at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, tempted Jesus three times in the wilderness. Jesus was in the tomb for three days. So you begin to see that in threes, there are very important things biblically whatever that mission and assignment is that the enemy is uh, attempting to interfere in or, or, or after or, you know, or trying to destroy. Now, interestingly enough, for me to see this in a dream, and I had another dream too that I can't even talk about yet, but I saw somebody who you would know at a secret meeting and dinner that is somehow attached to a plane hanger, a warehouse. And I saw this and I'm not uh, at liberty to talk about it yet. I'm just gonna pray. And then when the Lord releases me to, I will talk about it. But these dreams came over this past week. So these three demons are dispatched in three, which means whatever they are withstanding is all related to each other. They're being dispatched together. They've been dispatched in a group. The one all the way to the right, the boastful, fiery one with the big horns, he was doing all the talking. He's the front man, okay? He's the one that's going to arrogantly boast and speak and make noise in the courts, okay? He is the one that is going to make the most noise. With this going on, and Lord help me here, in Jesus' name, this is interconnected to other things in the nation. So their assignment isn't just in the courts. There is a trail that leads from the courts to certain people. There is a trail that leads from the courts to certain issues. There is a trail that leads from the courts to certain governmental leaders, okay? So this is like a long carotid artery. And all of these things are getting life from that one carotid artery. And these three principalities are helping that along. And they have been dispatched in a group because all the issues are related. And you may even see this when these issues come to the forefront of the Supreme Court or when they go into deliberation or with the verdict, start to pray. Because they were being incredibly arrogant and boastful and blasphemous about what they were going to do. And they are going to try to use people positioned in high places to do it. The unborn. It ties to the unborn. The unborn and the shedding of all of that blood through the harming of the unborn, through the harming of children, is where they're getting their power power they get from the very deceived people that serve them. So to turn cut and mortally wound their power supply, they know there's power in the blood too. It's just not the blood of Jesus. It's a very corrupted, dark power. And so this is a direct attack against their power and where they're getting their power from and who they're giving their power to because they're serving them. So this is why these three principalities with these three issues um, have been dispatched to interfere in this. Now, interestingly enough, there are some clues that have to do with Jesus and the Antichrist that tie to this, A, but B, that also biblically I perceive it to be the Lord has given revelation about what we really need to be looking for and why. Okay. Because there's a lot of confusion going on right now. There's a lot of panic. And you know what? We as the people of God are supposed to be firmly rooted, discerning the signs of the times like the sons of Issachar, knowing scripture and being able to discern events against scripture. And we cannot cram scripture. We have to discern it. And it has to match and it can't be a counterfeit. Okay. Now, 
Jesus began his ministry at 30 years old, correct? He died at the age of 33 on Passover. His ministry was three years long. Okay, so the clues in the life of Jesus having to do with the Antichrist and what we're seeing today uh, are like cobblestones. I think what we're seeing right now go on are cobblestones being laid for this as the book of Revelation is very clear. So I think we're seeing the cobblestone and the path being laid. I don't think we're quite there yet. But it's definitely cobblestones being laid in the path. The Antichrist puts people on a mock trial for three and a half years, right? So these three demons had to do, and what's going on in the nation with a mock trial, they're testing, they're pushing the limits. They're seeing what the people will believe, what the people won't believe, what the people take, what will the people take. This is all a mock trial, a test run. For three and a half years, gaining their trust, seeing how far he can push things, um, doing things to get people to, uh, you know, be fooled and to uh, give in to things that he wants. Except the mock trial is for three and a half years, and then the next three and a half years, everything is implemented, right? So right now, world leaders are seeing how far they can push things. They're seeing how far they can push things with the courts. They're seeing how far they can push things to corrupt the legal system. They're seeing how far they can push things with the people. Like an emergency broadcast system. You know the emergency broadcast system that comes on your TV or on your phone, you hear eh, eh, that, that totally annoying noise? And it says, this is a test of the public emergency broadcast system. The test looks to be written and sounds like the real emergency. It sounds like a real emergency event would be broadcasted. However, with a test, you have no real emergency. So the test is to run, really the test is to basically see when the real emergency happens that all systems are in place. So that's why they do a monthly test of the emergency broadcast system to make sure all systems are in order, in place and working. So when the emergency happens, everything will be implemented. That's what we're seeing right now. So we're seeing the test of the emergency broadcast system, right? We're seeing it in many areas of this nation. We're seeing it in the world where it may look like the book of Revelation. We may see a lot of similarities with it, but this is the test run before it. Let's put it that way. This is the test run before pieces of that are implemented. This is the test run for the world order before everything is put in place exactly the way they want and implemented. This is the this is a test phase, including for the people of God right now. This is a test. Now, Satan is a counterfeit. So he can only produce an on the surface, incredible replica. However, in the fine details, you begin to see where the counterfeit is. So for example, bankers are taught to spot a real bill from a fake. On the surface, they may look almost identical. However, when you get into paper that's used, ink used, design, the fine tuned eye, the trained eye can spot the flaws and can spot a counterfeit bill. Right now, we as the people of God need a fine-tuned eye and spirit. We need to be praying for that because we need to be able to spot. Where's the test run? To spot the trial run, to spot the mock trial. To be able to fine-tune it, to say, this may look like this, but we're not quite yet, there yet. Or this may look like this, but it's really a counterfeit of the enemy. So let's look at some of this revelation about the Antichrist. And how Jesus in his ministry, in order to convince people, he is God. He is the Messiah. He is. So the Antichrist in the book of Revelation, the one true, the one spoken about in the book of Revelation, because we've had many Antichrists come before, most of the dictators that have come forth in this world have been, you know, precursors to the Antichrist.
But this particular one is a counterfeit that is masterfully put together replica by Satan himself. So this means many of the hallmarks of Jesus's life, the Antichrist would have to follow along those lines enough to fool those who are not trained to spot the differences. So if we look at the life of Jesus and we know Satan's a counterfeit and he has to counterfeit this. So it kind of really looks like it, but isn't, what is he going to do? Well, first the antichrist maybe would have to be born in a similar fashion in a similar part of the world of Jesus comparable to Jesus's birth to fool the people. Therefore he would have to be born in a part of the world in an area where they tend many flocks of sheep. In fact, his parents might or may be shepherds or connected to that. So he's got to be born in a similar part of the world, correct? That Jesus was born in. Has to be born in an area where a lot of shepherding goes on. Why? Because that's what was going on in Jesus's day. In fact, Jesus was born um, amongst an area where there were animals. It was amongst a room or a stable where they kept animals is where Joseph and Mary. And so he would have to be born potentially in a similar fashion around these similar things in a similar part of the world. In fact, the word of God talks about the antichrist coming out of the old Roman empire that he would be raised up. So go on a map and go look at all of the countries that compose the old Roman empire. And that is uh, going to give you a clue. Secondly, the antichrist would have to come to a high governmental and spiritual authority at or around potentially the age of 30. Now, why, why 30 Jesus came into his full position of authority on this earth at the age of 30. So to mimic this, to counterfeit it, to counterfeit this for the people, to fool the people into believing he is what he isn't, this hallmark would have to be present. Young, charismatic, full of life. Young. Interestingly enough, when the enemy appears, to those in high level meetings in the occult. Now you learn this by reading books and listening to people who have been delivered by the Lord from that life. Many times the enemy appears in the form he fell in. When he fell, he didn't lose his form. A young, beautiful, charismatic, jovial man. However, beneath that thin, thin veil, that facade. No. So the antichrist is going to appear young, jovial, charismatic somehow and i'll tell you why i believe this the antichrist is going to have to be falsely and potentially baptized now I'm going to tell you why I'm giving you all of this in 1988, there was a book written. I think it was 88 reasons why Jesus is returning in 1988 and then about Jesus returning in 1989 and then around 1995, they said he was going to return. Then they were convinced when it hit 2000, it was all going downhill and Jesus was going to return. You see what I'm saying? Every time they think Jesus is going to return, he doesn't because no man knows the day or the hour and not anybody saying it. And trying to push it along is going to make the Lord return a second sooner than he has ordained to return. God has set a time. He has set a day. He has set an hour. And there is nothing that can be said that is going to move that up. To return then. And this is why we need discernment. And we need to examine these things and give these things full food for thought that I'm talking about. Because we have to put it up against scripture and knowing the enemy's a counterfeit, he's going to try to fashion something in the same form and manner 
of things that happened to Jesus himself to try to make it look like this is it. Now, somehow, I think the Antichrist is going to be baptized by a corrupt organization. Why do I think this? Because Jesus, before he took his position, there was a baptism at the Jordan River. There was a ceremonial baptism. Now, Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus is it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him to fulfill all righteousness. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, why did that have to happen? Why do I believe they're going to try to counterfeit this with the Antichrist? Numbers chapter 4, verse 3. From 30 years old and above, even to 50 years old, all who enter the service to do the work in the tabernacle of meeting. What that is saying is, for somebody to enter the service of priest and high priest, they have to be 30 years old. They can be no younger than 30 years old. This is why at 30 years old, Jesus came to the Jordan and got baptized. And then the Lord said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased because that followed a ceremony when it came to bringing somebody into the high priesthood. So Jesus, according to Torah law, waited till he was 30, was baptized. There was a ceremony. And then the Lord said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. When the father or the individual that's going to um, induct the son into the high priesthood, he says, in Jewish law and tradition, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is why the Lord said that, because this was according to Jewish law. Now. An event or ceremony with a religious aspect indicative of that day that is going to contain some type of seemingly supernatural sign or signs that somehow mimics aspects of when Jesus was 30 and went to the Jordan and was baptized and went into service. Somehow this has to be counterfeited because people that don't really know he's got to kind of make it look like this. So this is why I'm saying these are things to consider and pray about because we have to understand the enemy studies the patterns in the word and then he turns, but he can't match them exactly because he's not God. So he tries to counterfeit them and put enough aspects in. So it's a little bit of truth mixed with a whole lot of lie, but it kind of looks like the truth. You will even see the Antichrist mentioning perhaps that he wanted to be a religious authority figure, but realized he could help more and serve his faith. So he, there's going to be a bravado sort of boast, talking a very good game about faith, but it's all a counterfeit. Interestingly enough, if the Antichrist arises at the age of 30 and comes into his authoritative position at 30, three, he was the Passover lamb. He died on Passover. He was the sacrifice. The Antichrist is mortally wounded, which means if the enemy wanted to counterfeit it, it would be around 33 years of age around the time of what? Passover. If the enemy wants to counterfeit this, it might be biblical. So what I'm saying is, these are things to consider that the enemy may be trying to counterfeit when it comes to this time. You see what I mean? So this is to make it look like the events that happened with Jesus. These are why we have to consider these things. So I'm not saying this is set in stone. 
I'm saying we have to consider this, that the enemy has studied this. He will counterfeit it and he's going to hit on all the points in Jesus' life. So if the, if the Antichrist were to come into power, you know, at the age of 30, which I'm not saying he is, but I'm saying, let me put it this way. I'm not calling Barack Obama the Antichrist by any means. But what I'm saying is when he ran for office, people thought they wanted till he got into office and then he started doing everything destructive. That's my point in this. My point is you have to consider the fact that the enemy is not going to raise up an old man unrelatable to the people, unable to be jovial and charismatic, unable to be moldable enough for Satan himself. This is what I'm saying. You have to consider this, okay? Now, but they have to come out of the old Roman Empire. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you what countries the old Roman Empire contains. Old Roman Empire. Okay, so if you if you get up a map, I'm going to show you right here. We're going to get it up right now. And I'm going to show you the old Roman Empire. Let's just get a map that's got like... I want it in like English, you know what I mean? I want that I want you to be able to see a map of the old Rome. This may be good for the purposes that we're going to need it for. This one's good. Okay. Now, let's share the screen. Chrome. Here it is. Okay. So let's look at this. This is a map of the old Roman Empire. I want you to look at the part of the world it's in, and I'm going to name some of the countries. Spain, Germany, Italy. You've also got over here Syria, Mesopotamia, which is an old, you know what I mean, an old way of uh, identifying. But you see part of Africa, right? You see the border here of Africa that borders... The Mediterranean Sea, it looks like. So you see what I mean? You see, there, there's a, let's see what else we can identify in here. Britain, also, because they have this all in, a, you know, the writing is, is what it was in the old Roman Empire. So the, these cities are named, and countries basically are named after the map of the old Roman Empire, okay? So this is the area of the world that the Antichrist has to come out of according to the word of God. Now, that part of the world, right, is Europe slash the Middle East. That is the part of the world the Antichrist has to come out of. The Antichrist cannot rise up out of America. Now, if you notice, most of the dictators or a good concentration of dictators that have come along have arisen out of the old Roman Empire. Stalin, Hitler, that part of the world is what I'm saying. You have seen a concept. So if the enemy saw that a young charismatic individual rose up in America and was able to fool the people, why don't you think he would take a young charismatic individual and rise them up out of the old Roman Empire? That's my point. Because you have to look at scripture and then you have to weigh it against scripture and what scripture is saying. So my point is, I'm not saying he would be exactly 30 or exactly. What I'm saying is you have to consider that the enemy kind is going to counterfeit it and made it look like the points where in Jesus's life that would make people for this he's got to hit on points so he can't have this individual come out old and decrepit polished jovial charismatic incredibly intelligent this is what we have to think about is that the enemy to fool the people 
cannot present them with a washed up dishcloth. Now, were there things with the Obama presidency that had characteristics that you could look at and say, the Antichrist might do that? Interestingly enough, Jesus was nailed to a cross. He died on Calvary. He rose. So the enemy is going to have to touch on this point, right? If the enemy is following key points in Jesus's life to, discer to deceive the people, he's going to have to touch on this, correct? Now, let's read Revelation chapter 13, verses 13 through 15. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs, plural, which means he's going to do more than one, which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Who is to believe the Antichrist will be pierced. What does a sword do? It pierces. What happened to Jesus on Calvary at the and through seemingly miraculous events is resurrected and lives. He's going to be pierced. And this isn't just, you know what I mean? His flesh was grazed. This is something where the, all the best doctors in the world coming together could not save this person. This is something where this person is as good as dead. The chances of survival are nil, are none. And it is so miraculous that it puts people in a technological age in awe. You have to think about this too. The way to... And then being resurrected is another point that the enemy has to touch on. You see, the enemy knows he's got to make it look like the real thing. He's got to make the Antichrist look like the real deal. And the only way to make them believe he is God, or he's the Messiah, is to do things throughout the life of Jesus and counterfeit those things and kind of make it look like it enough to create a great deception. The miracles, and I'm putting those in parentheses, are going to be mimicked along the same line, and the kind of miracles, perhaps, to solve similar issues Jesus faced. So if he's going to perform signs, some of it has to mimic maybe feeding a large amount of people who have no food, making it look completely miraculous, maybe turning water into something else, maybe solving an enormous crisis, Maybe uh, making it look like people uh, that are deathly ill with cancer are suddenly healed. But somehow the miracles, the signs have to biblically follow in line the signs of the prophets and the signs of Jesus. Why is he calling fire out of the sky? Well, if we go back to Mount Carmel and the showdown between the prophets of God and the prophets of Baal, Elisha, the prophet, called down fire from heaven to consume the sacrifice God and Elisha was a prophet of the most high God. So it has to follow along the line of the signs and wonders of the prophets and of Jesus. I also believe the antichrist is going to surround himself with astrologers, not astronomers. You see the wise men, the company of wise men says there was just three. They just brought him three gifts. People assume there were three wise men because there were three gifts given, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But actually, it doesn't say the amount of wise men that came. It could have been a company of 50 people. But they were astronomers, so they watched the skies. They watched for prophecy and signs in the skies. The Antichrist is going to surround himself with astrologers and scientists. That's what I believe he's going to surround himself with, astrologers scientists 